Today, we're gonna do comparison sentence correction practice questions. Now, the GMAT thinks these are really hard. The GMAT thinks these are high value questions, but I'm gonna show you a very easy way to go through these, and after you understand how this works, you're gonna move right through these really quickly and really accurately. And just for being here today, I have a free gift for you, three simple strategies to raise your GMAT score 30 points today. These are the same strategies I teach all of my private students. When you start to implement them and you can implement them today, your score is going to move up and it's going to move up a lot. That's yours for free. You can download it right in the description. Okay, let's get on to those comparisons. Comparisons frequently use the single most important sentence structure on the entire GMAT, which is this. The intro phrase with comma. Yeah, okay, so I'm going to explain what it is. Comparison intro phrases with commas look like this. Unlike the Greek economy, comma, larger than the landmass of Europe, comma, like most test takers, comma, and they always have these two elements. First, they have a comparison word or phrase, unlike or larger than or like, and they will also tell you exactly what you're comparing, the Greek economy, the landmass of Europe, or test takers. So the trick is we need to be comparing in a ridiculously strict sense, apples to apples, and we want whatever we're comparing to come right after the commas. For example, unlike the Greek economy, Italy instituted strict reforms. That's wrong because we're comparing Greek economy to a country, Italy. Unlike the Greek economy, Italy's economy had strict reforms is correct because we're comparing Greece's economy to Italy's economy. Similarly, larger than the landmass of Europe, Ukraine is an important exporter of food. That's wrong because we're comparing the landmass to a country, Ukraine. Instead, it needs to be larger than the landmass of Europe. Ukraine's huge land footprint supports important food exports. Now we're comparing a landmass to a landmass. Like most test takers, the anxiety Bruce felt was normal. That sounds right, but it's wrong. We're comparing test takers, who are people, to anxiety. Instead, it has to be, like most test takers, Bruce felt a normal amount of anxiety. We're comparing test takers, a person, with Bruce, another person. Now, they don't always use an intro phrase to do comparisons. Sometimes they use just plain old comparison words, but the keys are the same. Identify very specifically and very literally what is being compared to what and be very strict to make sure apples are being compared to apples. For example, the article compared the popularity of sculpture with visual art. Now that sounds okay, but let's get very precise on what is getting compared to what. Popularity is getting compared to visual art. That's wrong. We need to compare popularity with popularity. Now we can do that in two ways. First, we can just repeat the word popularity, or we can use the phrase that of. Now the phrase that of works because the pronoun that refers very specifically to the word popularity. In fact, we're often attracted to the phrase that of or those of, if the comparison is plural, when we're doing comparison questions. Let's try this one. Like Rousseau, Tolstoy rebelled against the unnatural complexity of human relations in modern society. Okay, well, we definitely have an intro phrase with a comma and a comparison word, like. So what's getting compared to what? Well, it looks like Rousseau is getting compared to Tolstoy. Hey, that totally works. We'll keep A around. Let's take a look at B. B compares Rousseau to Tolstoy's rebellion. That doesn't work. B is definitely out. C uses the word as incorrectly. There are two things to look out for whenever you see the word as in a sentence. First, you usually need to have two as's in a sentence. When there's just one alone, it's usually not right. Also, usually the first as needs to come before some sort of descriptor. For example, what we really want to see is something like this. My brother is twice as tall as me. All right, let's take a look at D. D is even worse. Not only is as did grammatically questionable, is just an awkward and wordy phrase. Remember, the GMAT values efficiency over almost anything else. We already have a very efficient sentence in answer choice A. The word like works great. 
Shoving in a wordier phrase, as did, not only makes things more awkward, but it makes things longer and less efficient. Don't worry about trying to parse the grammar. Just know that there's no way the GMAT is going to be okay with it when you already have very efficient answer choice A as an alternative. In many ways, E has the same problem as D. So I suppose technically, it does compare a rebellion with a rebellion. It just does it in this really awkward and confusing and non-efficient way when you compare it to answer choice A. A says the very same thing very clearly and cleanly and uses a sentence structure we love. Notice how we have a subject followed immediately by a single active verb. Tolstoy rebelled. We love that. And more importantly, the GMAT loves it. It's super efficient and much cleaner than E. Our answer choice is A. Good job. Like Auden, the language of James Merrill is chatty, arch, and conversational, given to complex syntactic flights as well as to prosaic free verse scrolls. I don't know what any of that means, but I do know that we have an intro phrase with a comma and a comparison word, like. So what's getting compared to what? Auden, who I'm guessing is a person, an author, because they capitalize his name, is getting compared to the language of James Merrill. That doesn't work. A is out. B has the same problem. Auden is getting compared to James Merrill's language. Now, C is kind of awkward, but it does compare Auden's language with James Merrill's language, so we'll keep it around at least for the time being. D uses this weird and awkward phrase as with, as with, which is grammatically questionable and we really don't like it. Also, it compares Auden with a language, so that doesn't work. And E just flat out really doesn't make any sense and uses this really weird as is phrase at the start of the sentence, so that really doesn't work. That makes C the correct answer. Now, I don't love answer choice C. I'd never write a sentence like that but all the other sentences are clearly wrong, and C is the only one that actually works, so we go with C. Good job. Morgan tractors have had phenomenal sales success in counties with steep farming terrain because their bigger engines are better suited for farming on hills than most of their competitors. Okay, I don't see an intro phrase with a comma, but I do see comparison words. Something is better than something else and it looks like engines are better than competitors. That doesn't work. Engines need to be compared to engines or competitors need to be compared to competitors. You can't compare engines to competitors. That means A is out. B has the same problem. Engines are getting compared to competitors. Now, C works. It reuses the word engines, which we don't love, but it does work, so we'll keep it around. Now, D is just bad. We always want the subject up front, followed by a verb when we can get it. Morgan tractors have had. We want Morgan tractors up front, not the phenomenal success of Morgan tractors sales. That's just awkward and wordy. Again, the GMAT values efficiency over almost anything else. Also, D blows the comparison. It compares engines to competitors, so it's out. E is almost right. It compares engines to that of their competitors. The problem is that engines are plural. E would have worked if it would have said those of instead of that of. So that means C is correct. Nice job. Whenever you see comparison words, be sure to be super literal and super strict. Pick out and pay very close attention to what exactly is getting compared to what. Okay, good job. Okay, great work. So this is really just all about getting very, very specific on what is getting compared to what. And if you do that, you'll find that you move very quickly and very accurately through these high value comparison questions. All right, great work. We'll see you next time.